of 10 Cats, Great Britain, David Walliam. Fully restored, Griff Reese Jones. And their team captain, Jason Manford. And facing them tonight, from Star Stories, Reese Thomas. Here's one we made earlier, Connie Hawk. And their team captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello, and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys, and statistics. Did you know, for example, Britain consumes over 400 polo mints every second, but Britain's mum still knows Britain's been smoking. 5% <laughs> of Britain's toddlers are obese, and they're known as waddlers. <laughs> Almost half of all men lie to their partners about their looks to keep them happy. I do. I tell her, I'm dead good-looking. I don't know what's the matter with your eyes. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. <laughs> Jason, your team to go first. Uh, is it uh, wag weddings? Wag weddings? That happened at weekend. Four footballers got married in, was it 48 hours? That's right, yeah. And they didn't get married to each other. It wasn't civil partnerships. <laughs> they married ladies. <laughs> you sound a little bit disappointed. <laughs> Which um, footballers were they then that got married? OK. There were Take four. Me through them. John yeah. Terry. Yeah. That's right. one. Uh, who Michael does he Carrick, play for? John Terry Chelsea. plays for Chelsea. He's the right. Chelsea captain. Yeah. He also yes. plays for England. Peter Shilton. Did they all get married in a church? <laughs> I don't know if they got married in a church. I didn't go. I oh, don't I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you just seem to be an expert yeah. on this. All right, I'm trying to go through. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought one was not married. <laughs> I just didn't know. I just thought on the way we'd John fill Terry, in a picture for... Michael yes. Carrick. Is that oh, yeah. right? That's right. Yeah. One yeah, of the not? Neville brothers. Gary Neville. Gary Neville. Right. And another man. I saw the pictures in the magazine. They all look beautiful. Some of the wags were orange. With envy. Green orange. It was very lavish. John Terry actually had Lionel Richie oh, yeah. play at his wedding. I actually, for my girlfriend's party last year, I hired a Lionel Richie look-alike. You haven't got a girlfriend. Hey? <laughs> you haven't got a girlfriend. <laughs> How have you got a girlfriend? <laughs> You're about twelve. <laughs> We couldn't get Del Boy because he wouldn't come down from Derby on the train. It's a very glamorous life you lead, isn't it? Chris? What's Del Boy going to do? I mean, if you get Lionel Richie yeah, down, yeah. of course he's going to look like he sings a bit of a song. Fall through the bar. He was going to fall through the bar. Yeah. What sort of list is this that you go, right, Del Boy can't make it? <laughs> <laughs> Lionel Richie, anyone? <laughs> second place, second place. At uh, Gary Neville's wedding, it was proofreading. I wasn't proofreading it, that's the wrong phrase. I was going through OK magazine, poof just reading. poof reading it. Oh, that's right, that's what I was doing. And I was going. Oh. <laughs> I was going through one of the magazines. It said, "Oh, Gary Neville's dad was there. Neville, Neville." <laughs> I was like, it must have been a mistake. But I had a look, and he's really called Neville, Neville. Do you think people say to him, "Do you so mind if I call you Neville?" <laughs> John Terry had pie and mash at his. That's right. Yeah, and one of them had chicken and chips, and the other one had sausage and mash. They might as well have had it at Heston Services. <laughs> Do you wear tops like that on Blue Peter? Actually, I have worn this on Blue Peter. I may start tuning in. <laughs> John Terry had the best one, because afterwards, in the courtyard, he had the Philharmonic Orchestra doing the theme from Gladiator. I thought, I want to be there, just... Can you feel the power of the gladiators? <laughs> Water! Oh, brilliant. A wooga! <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the uh, wag weddings is one of the most talked about things this week. Oh, <laughs> yes, four Premiership footballers got married last weekend. The vicar almost stopped one of the ceremonies when the congregation started chanting, Who's the bastard in the black? <laughs> Sean, Connie, Reese, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I think definitely the big furore over Salman Rushdie being given a, a knighthood, which has uh, caused quite a lot of consternation all over the world. And, um, a lot of people are very upset, particularly in Pakistan, they're very upset about it, very annoyed. They've been burning effigies of him, the Queen, basically anything they can make out of uh, a few old socks and jumpers and newspapers. <laughs> it's about burning things all the time. Why can't I do something else rather than burn? Anyway, so they've... Um... 
<laughs> where do they get them from? Is there an effigy shop where they go, hello, effigies? <laughs> Who would you like? Salmon Rushdie. We're all out of Salmon Rushdie. <laughs> We've got a Jilly Cooper. No? <laughs> OK. Isn't it nice to know that Pakistan pays attention to the honours list? Nobody cares at all over here. <laughs> <laughs> at last, Salmon Rushdie's in a, in a place to do something about it, because, let's face it, that's what knights are for. They should get together, all the knights of the land. Sir Alan Sugar, Sir Paul McCartney, get on their steeds and get out there and fight with Sir Salmon. That's what they want to see, isn't it? I don't think, I, I don't think I'd want to see Elton John versus the Taliban. <laughs> when you book Griff Reese Jones, you don't often assume he's going to call for a holy war, but... Yeah. <laughs> what do we think about the other honours? Ian Botham, who, from the shredded wheat adverts... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and the beef adverts. Yeah. You can't do both! <laughs> Either good food or bad food, Ian! <laughs> well, on both of them, he only didn't get his knighthood earlier on because he smoked <laughs> marijuana. But it didn't seem to stop Paul McCartney. He was arrested trying to smuggle hash into Japan one day. And Lennon days, got one, but Lennon, he refused Lennon it. Lennon got one, but he sent it back years yeah, later, yeah. didn't he? and so did that bloke this week. A bloke yeah. this week from Asian Provocateur. Yeah, yeah, him. He makes fancy pants for the ladies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he got uh, given an MBE and he said, no, I don't want it. Yeah. Sounds like he got his knickers in a twist. <laughs> <laughs> you keep talking about marijuana and pants and stuff, and I'm like, I can't, oh, can't move talk about it. Yeah, I can't. You can't talk about that? Not really. You just said it. Not marijuana yeah, and we'll pants. Edit this bit out You'll, you'll just edit it. It'll, it'll just be, this is going to be half an hour of you going, marijuana and pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave it. Uh, uh, just, just one second. What are the things you like, Connie? <laughs> Nobody around this table who has an honour, I don't think. Is Jimmy's there a, a dame. From the Gulf? Are you a dame, dame? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was an accident. I used to work in a factory. I'd love to see you in a factory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the boss's son's in. <laughs> Hello, what happens here? <laughs> Those drills are very big. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the Queen's birthday honours is one of the most talked about things this week. Hey. Yes, it is the second most talked about thing. Yes, this week the Queen announced her birthday honours list. Beefy Botham has been knighted. Surely now he'll be known as Sir Loin. <laughs> Ian Botham and Alan Lamb famously starred in a series of British meat adverts, much to the annoyance of Somerset all-rounder Jeff Chicken. <laughs> right, Jason, your team, what else have the uh, nation been talking about this week? Yeah. Come on, well, look, come, on look, look, come on, Jason, have a guess. Speak for it. <laughs> Do you know what this is? This is when double acts haven't got their mates. That's yeah. what this is. <laughs> Uh, that the prisons are full. Oh. Have you not heard this? Controversial. It is a bit controversial, a little bit of news. So the story is that they're going to release a lot of um, prisoners now because they're full. <laughs> early. 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 They're, they're going to release the them prisoner. early. They're releasing 25,000, aren't they? I assume not all at once. It's like the start of the marathon. <laughs> it's all come steaming out of the prison. All straight to a bus stop. <laughs> Some of them no. dressed as rhinos, hopefully, just for the comic. <laughs> they have said it's only going to be like for like petty crimes, like burglary and drug dealing, which I, you know I think is a good thing because the car boot sale near me is boring at the moment. <laughs> tell you what, my biggest fear is going to prison, being no locked way. up with four burly, tattooed men. Your worst fear, or most of your video collection? <laughs> Thinking about it. <laughs> okay, let's have a look and see whether prisons is up there. Yes, this is the story that prisoners are to be released early because of overcrowding. To stay in police cells, it costs £1,800 per prisoner per night. That seems like a lot of money, but it includes dinner, breakfast and tickets to a West End show. <laughs> sure, can you Reece, what the nation be talking about? Uh, is it Bernard Manning has died? Oh, yeah. Bernard Manning, the famous comedian. The headline in one of the tabs was Racist in Peace. <laughs> Racist in Peace? It was on The Sun, wasn't it? Can you believe that's someone's job to write those shit headlines? Yeah. <laughs> That, so some bloke comes in and goes, racist in peace, see us tomorrow. All right. <laughs> that's it, that's his job. <laughs> I met uh, Bernard Manning once. I uh, was doing a gig when I first started out. I was on stage and I did some joke about poo or wee. And when I got off stage, Bernard Manning was at the bar and he came over to me and he said, uh, he said, you could be quite funny, you son. He's got something wrong with his throat, right? He says, uh, mm. he not says, anymore, he hasn't. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you could be quite funny, you son. I said, oh, thanks very much, Mr. Manning. He said, uh, just a little tip for you. Don't talk about wee and poo on stage. You know, people find it offensive. <laughs> You've been told you're offensive by Bernard Manning. 
when I found out he was dead, I went, yay! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Like that. Be mainly because I think he'd make a brilliant ghost. <laughs> you sit having your dinner and you go, little Jewish fella walked into a pub. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is so fat. <laughs> Be a fantastic ghost. Why, why I think his wife really was fat and he was just stating a fact. Yeah. <laughs> but he probably wouldn't have done it as a joke then, would he? No. My wife is so fat she hates herself and sits in the room crying all day long. Connie, <laughs> any, any thoughts on Bernard Manning? Um, not a fan, personally. Has he got a Blue Peter badge? Uh... Manning. He's raised a lot of money for charity. I wondered <laughs> if there was some sort of way. Well, he has raised a lot of money for charity, but he was a racist, so, uh, <laughs> send him a black one for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Bernard Manning is up there. Well, he's definitely not. He'll be in hell. Uh, <laughs> Let's see if he's one of the most talked about things this week. Yeah, he yes, he is the most talked about thing this week. <laughs> Bernard Manning died this week. It was a black day for comedy, which he wouldn't have approved of. <laughs> He'll be remembered as racist, sexist and homophobic. Although we must not forget, he was also a big fat fatty. <laughs> right, one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? The Glastonbury Festival, which is happening this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? Have you been talking about it? Are you going to go, David? No, I'm not, because I've already had sex in a tent when I was in the Sea Scouts. Right. So... <laughs> I'm not going on. I think I am the only person here who went to the original Glastonbury. In 1823. <laughs> <laughs> and if you vote for it, we can rebuild it. <laughs> when was that? Tell it us was in 1971. I was born in 1971. Were you? Your mother didn't go to a tent in... Oh, no, never mind. Uh... <laughs> I went there last year. It's horrible. They had big beef burger things on... Uh, they were cooking about a thousand beef burgers <laughs> on steel drums. That's where it's sticks of hamburgers there. It's full of idiots. I hate the You'd have loved it, I'd have thought. It's very muddy. You'd be like, big shit surrounded by idiots. It was horrible, I didn't like any of it. They'd have lifted you up as one of them. <laughs> Carried you round. He's our leader. <laughs> Let's see if Glastonbury is up there. Yes, this weekend is the Glastonbury Festival. During the festival, Glastonbury is transformed into a city the size of Sunderland, which, if you want to spend your weekend getting robbed and watching people piss outside, is a slightly cheaper alternative. <laughs> right, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean Rees and Connie have two points. Jason, David and Griff have three points. <laughs> Our next round is pick of the polls. Our teams choose a picture and then have to answer a question based on a related survey or statistic. Sean, Reese, and Connie, you're going first. The bodybuilding lady. Yeah. We have her. That picture represents exercise, and it's a word association question. I'm looking for the top word or phrase the public said when we said exercise. Gym. Yeah? Oh, sorry, I thought you were... <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a noise, like... <laughs> Jimmy, I'm just trying to get a picture here. They just walk up to people and they say exercise. People say, fuck off, or... I think... Go away. <laughs> Generally, they tell them it's a survey. They don't just oh, walk up <laughs> Exercise! <laughs> that you're instructing them to exercise. Yeah, that's, funny, that's, what I, that's what I would say if somebody came up to me and said exercise. I'd say, fuck off. <laughs> Have they gone to the gym? Have they got a vending machine? Mm. <laughs> that's my favourite one. Yeah. And, uh, How much for Jaffa Cakes? This is brilliant. <laughs> I'm here every day. I started um, seeing this personal trainer. When you say personal trainer, are they people that ask you questions like, How big's your cock? Did they get you <laughs> sex last night? <laughs> I met him in the changing rooms first before we did our session. And he was naked, right, before we even started. Naked. Now, there's something about naked men, right? There's naked. something about naked men. There's something about naked men <laughs> I'm not fully comfortable with. And, um, I looked at his cock, Jimmy. I looked at his cock. <laughs> does that make me gay? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> what? what is the answer? Come on. <laughs> He's asking you! Yeah. It's to do with your stomach. Six pack. Oh. Six pack is the right answer. Yes. Correct. <laughs> yes, the top phrase people said when we said exercise was six pack. Okay, Jason. Let's have me. Yes, let's have me. Let's have me. Okay, this question is about egomania. <laughs> okay, thirty percent of women would like David Williams what? To finger them. <laughs> The 
that wrong. That... <laughs> it's a different survey. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so, 30% of women would like David Williams what? Would like David Williams if he wasn't a puff. <laughs> <laughs> The obsessed great big with... screaming Nancy boy. You're obsessed <laughs> with trying to out me. I don't know about screaming Nancy boy. Sometimes he might. Mo... Oh no. <laughs> You've had a bit of both though, and do you it's still like coming out? Is it? It seems as you only come out if you're completely gay and not just a you bit. You just gay. have to sort of half open the closet door. <laughs> <laughs> the phrase you're looking for is half rice, half chips. Uh, that's what we call it in the north. If, any, if somebody's a bit of both. All Northerners call, call it that. Yeah, all of us, we all Even call Alan it Alan Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Bennett does, oh, I tell you, I was once half rice, half chips, and he does that. <laughs> he does that. I don't know why he does that. He's not got boots. That's just what all Northerners oh, well, do. Nice. I know. <laughs> 32 A. B. 30% of women would like David Rollins what? I actually know the answer. Yeah. It was a survey done before Christmas, and they would like me to come round and have dinner with them. Do you know who did the survey? Piedor, the <laughs> wine people. Is always Piedor, not Saga? <laughs> that is the correct answer, yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, the answer is 30% of women would like David Williams round for dinner. And that was a survey of the women that have slept with David Williams, the largest survey ever conducted. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's two points for Sean's team and five points for Jason's team. The next round is Believe It or Not. In this round, I give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Cold feet and chillblains can be murder. So why not try banana socks? As worn by the Shetland fishermen, I'm reliably informed by Kate Smith of Kidderminster. They're easy to make from scraps of wool and can even be worn in bed. Aren't they lovely? <laughs> well, for added warmth, what about a body warmer? Or, as Joyce Letchford from Surrey suggests, an old anorak from a jumble sale with the sleeves cut out. <laughs> Just the job. Remember this jumper from the last series? Well, we've had it knitted up in lots of lovely colours. Doesn't it look gorgeous, all soft and cosy in mohair? And we're sending that to Joyce Letchford from Surrey <laughs> for her body warmer. Well done, Joyce. <laughs> that was Judy Spears giving us some tips on how to keep warm and recycle at the same time. Now, here's your related statistic. 25% of Brits say they can't be bothered to recycle, even if it means the planet will die. True or false? They've not specified which planet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it is Jupiter. Who gives a shit? <laughs> no, no, no. The thing I can't work out what to recycle is, you know, the meat nappy. When you buy meat and it's got, like, a nappy underneath <laughs> <it>. <laughs> You know when you buy meat in a supermarket, it comes in like a plastic thing, and then underneath it they put this nappy there to soak up all the blood. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, calling that a nappy has made it disgusting. <laughs> I've never given that a moment's thought before in my life, but I'm now becoming vegetarian. It's a nappy. A nappy for the meat. Yes, I've got those out, and I'm thinking, what do I do? Obviously, I suck it dry. <laughs> Does it go in with paper, or do I cook it? I had that argument with the bin man. There was a bit of uh, basil sticking out the top of the bin. <laughs> he said, that's garden waste. I said, it's not, that's a garnish. <laughs> <laughs> it, nearly, it nearly came to blows. What if you wanted to throw away a rake? A broken rake or some... Or a wheel, an old wheelbarrow? Or maybe some pots? Where would you throw them? Garden waste? <laughs> if I had them now, I'd throw them at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest. I think it's true. True, 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 true. False. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but we've decided we're going to say yeah, true. Yeah, we can say true as well. Well, no, oh. because you've got to say, to say false. Why is it eight? Unanimous. They'll say false, we've yeah. said true. Well, I can tell you the answer is true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 25% of Brits say they can't be bothered to recycle, even if it means the planet will die. A carbon footprint is a metaphor for the mark you leave on the Earth as you walk through your life. Of course, I don't have one, as I drive everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's two points for Sean's team and six points for Jason's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Mm. Here's your first one. Worst chat-up line. You don't sweat much for a fat girl? <laughs> I'd like to take you out for dinner, but by the look of it, you've already had dinner. 
Okay. Is it 0898999111? <laughs> you get it? Because there's like, those chat lines. <laughs> Do you know one of the most effective things to way to meet women, uh, particularly seeing single women, if you're on your own, is to stand outside a bar, to have a look and see if there's any women, throw some confetti over yourself and walk in crying. <laughs> that gets a lot of attention from women. <laughs> You're in luck. I've decided to go ugly early. <laughs> You're in luck. I've decided to go ugly early is perhaps the rudest thing you could ever say <laughs> to another human being. I didn't say it. Well, no. Not to you. It's not to you. Don't. It's not to don't. you. <laughs> no, don't. It's not. No, no I, don't, I won't. I don't like Just it. come here. Come here. I don't sure. like it though. No, it's but. <laughs> Sexual harassment in the workplace. <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, get your coat, love? I've got a knife. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty much there with that. Get your coat, love. You pulled. Great answer. <laughs> Best person to have on your side in a fight. I'd have Reese. I'd have Reese because I'm bound to punch him first. <laughs> <laughs> Fern Britton. She fights like she talks. Dirty. <laughs> I once knocked somebody out completely by accident. I'm quite soft, really. Basically, this bloke was kicking off with his girlfriend in the bar, and I was having a nosy, like you do, right? And just having a watch and see what it was about and stuff. And then he caught my eye and was like, What are you looking at? And I was like, Oh, you two fighting, like. And um, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and, uh, well done. Yeah, it's a really rhetorical <laughs> question, the one <laughs> I realise now. <laughs> and he come, he come running at me, um, like really angry, like to hit me, and I just went. <laughs> and he knocked himself out on my fist. <laughs> I'd love you to run into my fist. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we've got Connie Huck on the show and I'm getting the sexual harassment. That... <laughs> Best person to have on your side in a fight. You used to be a footballer. Uh, Vinnie Jones. Correct. Oh, man. Yes, the best person to have on your side during a fight is Vinnie Jones. Of course, the worst thing about having Vinnie Jones on your side in a fight is that means you're in a Guy Ritchie movie. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Reese, and Connie have three points. Jason, David and Griff are the winners with seven points. Yeah! Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>